Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Paleontologists React to the Design. Hang on. Can we, <laughs> Alex? Sorry, it was sliding. Moved his laptop. <laughs> Welcome back to Paleontologists <laughs> React. Stability on top of the mountain of blankets did not look like it was tenable. I had to make a split second decision. Alex, Alex you are barely in frame right now. Hold on. Let me... Much better. There we go. Y'all motherfuckers have a table? Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Paleontologist Rank, the dinosaur designs of Jurassic World Evolution 2. Today, we're taking a look at another armored dinosaur. Uh, but before we get into that, I want to briefly introduce ourselves for any new viewers on the channel. I'm James Napoli. I'm a postdoctoral researcher at North Carolina State University and the North Carolina Museum of Natural Sciences. My name is Amelia Zietlow. I'm a PhD candidate at the American Museum of Natural History. And I have an animal here that is attacking me. So pardon my disarray. Hi, my name is Scott Johnston. I am the vertebrate paleontology fossil preparator and technician at the Harvard University Museum of Comparative Zoology. Hi, I'm Alex Rubenstahl. I'm a PhD candidate at Yale University. And this is all a big lie. This is the third one of these we've recorded tonight. This isn't a new day. <laughs> As you might be able to tell by the same shirts that we're wearing. It is I'm... a new day. It's 12.07 a.m. Oh. <laughs> it's a new dawn. It's a new day. It's a new life. And Boy, I'm man. not feeling good. My name is Dalton Meyer. <laughs> I'm a PhD candidate at Yale University as well. And together, we're, we're the skeleton, skeleton crew. crew. And we we're have been all crew. night. <laughs> um, and we will be forever. So... Today, Dalton, why don't you take us away and show us this enclosure you've built? Yeah, so this is an enclosure full of little guys. And today our little guy of choice is Notosaurus. And they're frolicking through the fields and fens, having a wonderful time. We've chosen this particular bluff overlooking the sea because Notosaurus was actually found in marine sediments in what's called the Frontier Formation. And as Scott hypothesized, it's very possible it's included in the game explicitly because it's from the Frontier Formation and it's made by Frontier Studios. Oh, look at them go. They're going underneath each other. Traffic jam. That's a good behavior. I like that quite a bit. A little glitchy, but yes, that's... Oh, <laughs> he kicked him. Oh, oh, that's excellent. Oh, that's wow, that just maybe jumped the... up an entire letter. Yeah, similar. Yeah, that really... That really delights. We're gonna have to see that again a whole lot closer up. Yeah, don't worry. We I'll, the next time go. I see it happening, I'll, oh, I'll yeah. get in closer. I, run funny. That's great. I have many times, and if you play this game, you've probably thought several times of why the hell did they choose to include X creature, such as one of our previous episodes, Hoyangasaurus. Um, why did, they, of all the animals, why that one? Uh, and I am pretty sure that someone found out that there was a frontier formation working at Frontier Games and chose one of the only dinosaurs known from there, or one yeah. of the only things known from there. Yeah, it's a remarkably and, unproductive deposit. Yeah. And so as you might see by the four legs and general land living behavior that we're observing, this animal didn't live in the sea. It was, it, was, it was found in marine sediments, but it did not live in the sea. So what is a possible mechanism for how it got there is what's called bloat and float, which is a, a, a funny name for a, a somewhat grim and gross process in which the decaying body of an animal fills with decay gases that the bacteria produce, which help to make it more buoyant. And you see this with other ankylosaurs too, and it might be because their body is held together by okay, all of these osteoderms. There he goes. And we're gonna go. And here comes the kick. Bonk. Ah. <laughs> ah, it's delightful. That's so good. Oh, and a little, a little hip check. That's great. Um, but basically, these animals are built like tanks, right? And so the, these gases expand, and instead of just immediately like bursting and popping, they become buoyant carcass balloons that have the opportunity to float out to sea. And then at some point, the balloon will pop and the carcass will sink down to the bottom of the ocean and various parts of it will be preserved in the fossil record. Hence the bloat and hence the float. 
Yeah, right. and so, I mean, again, as, as I'm sure you're all aware, I work on Mosasaurs, but I do, uh, the, so the, so I work on Mosasaurs, but I do see dinosaurs in Kansas, and they are both notosaurs. Um, they're Silvasaurus and Niobrarosaurus at the Sternberg Museum and, and KU, and they are both bloat and, blo yeah. and float fossils. But I think it's probably worth saying, right, like, just because keeping in mind that you, there, are, there are some who might believe that such such fossil assemblages are evidence of catastrophic floods of a Noachian nature, but a good indication that this is a these animals are probably transported is how incomplete they are. Mm -hmm. Like these these dinosaurs that are found in these marine sediments are almost always very fragmentary, yeah. partial skeletons, often just single elements. So, because this animal is known from let's just say very fragmentary material to say the least. Um, it's the design I, we wouldn't necessarily say is like taking liberties. Cause we kind of don't know what this animal looks like. It's just not really notosaurus. It's mu a much better representation. Well, I guess it's, it's a representation of Borealopelta, which is one of the most absolutely stunningly beautiful dinosaur fossils, or just fossils, ever found. I remember when I first saw the news for it, I genuinely didn't believe that it was a fossil at first. I thought it was a cool sculpture. I remember scrolling by it on TikTok, uh, on TikTok, on Twitter. Um, it, it's it's simply stunning. Mm -hmm. It looks like a gargoyle. It looks like it, it genuinely looks like it's a statue carved from stone. It looks like the animal just laid down and went to sleep. And that's partially because uh, the ankylosaurs are completely covered in so much ridiculous amount of armor that that's kind of what they looked like is uh, how the armor looked. Um, but it's absolutely mind blowing. And if you get a chance to go to the Tyrell and visit it, don't be a dumb dumb like me and do it. <laughs> right. If you're an hour away, don't simply not go to the Tyrell because you don't want to pay for a rental car. Well, also be old enough to rent a car. Or, or or don't go when you're too young to rent a car to go to the Royal Tyrell Museum of Paleontology. Make better life decisions than me and Dalton and simply and be, be born older. earlier. <laughs> right. So the fun thing about Boreal Apelta is that it's another bloat and float. It's found in completely marine deposits from a slightly richer period of the fossil record where we have more dinosaurs preserved. It's early Cretaceous, so Notosaurus would have been a little bit later and presumably a little bit more evolutionarily derived. Um, that said, Borealopelta is a stunning bloat and float because I, they almost call it mummified, right? Like, it, it's just... I mean, it's not really a mummy, but it's just a perfect representation yeah. of the animal. Borealopeltis float float too. Mm -hmm. Marine deposit. Oh, yeah. Oh, I remember the because it's in those. That it's in the are you sure these things just aren't like marine? <laughs> <laughs> this this is not an ocean going animal. This is why they don't have the tail club. This but is the face of the old man. Weird, Wait. Though. What if it yeah, had this it soft tissue pale t tail paddle and like maybe the spikes were supporting like a stingray right, wing? You know? Right. Or balloons. We can't say they didn't have them. Borealopelta is really cool also because Borealopelta is so well preserved that we can actually tell what color it was. I don't remember the exact source of evidence. Does anybody else remember what they did? Was it just like uh, melanosomes preserved in the keratin? It was melanosomes. Mm -hmm. It was melanosomes and new melanosomes. Like, uh, with, because if memory serves, those are kind of like the only evidence of color that can solidly fossilize uh, um no no you i remember there was a snake that had another kind of pigment uh pigment structure but at least for dinosaurs i think it's what we're limited to well okay. also the isn't how are we inferring iridescence and like microraptor and kaihong that's the, like structural right that's structural that. right structural. yes yeah but so there I are think... other ways but yes so I guess in really specific situations, we could tell if something is blue or not. 
But it would depend on preservation, being able to it tell would you. Incredibly depend on preservation. Mm -hmm. yeah. But um, the melanosomes and new melanosomes are, uh, they're not, they're, they're pigment, they're not cells, right? No. No, they're, they're like proteins. They're right? proteins. They're like Wait. capsules. I think they're organelles. What? Melanosomes are, are organelles. Okay. Yeah. So they're parts um, of cells. They're they're in the cells. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah. What about you, melanosomes? Are they the same thing? Yeah. Yeah. I would like in terms know. of like the well, structure. They... Like the well, I think class. I think melanosomes. I don't know if you melanosomes are a thing. There's you melanin and pheo melanin oh, that form okay. different that, and like the Dicks. shape of the melanosome is dictated Dalton, by the Don't you take this? <laughs> um. No, you, I think you, you, you had it. You got it. So the melanosomes are organelles in, in cells. So really quick, like cell biology lesson. Cells have little things in them, and they're called organelles because they're tiny, but they function kind of like organs do in a whole organism. And so melanosomes being an organelle, they're tiny things within the cells. And my understanding is that they are the organelles that contain the pigment. Mm -hmm. So they, I'm assuming, contain different kinds of pigments and different amounts of pigments. And that's how you can get a sense of, I don't know how this works with dinosaurs or like, you know, how you tell which pigments are which, so um, but like in a living the animal, shape. the shape. Okay, sure. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so that, that is what a melanosome is. Yeah. And so some melanosomes are kind of more rod shaped and some are more spherical in shape and, and looking at what shapes are there, what the like distribution of them is and what proportion are, are rod like and sphere like. At a, at a very kind of nutshell level, will give you some sense of what color is being represented by the patch that you're investigating. Right. And I believe, based on, I, th I think on the shape or however they've been identified, that they're most similar to, to the melanin groups found in bird feathers, right? I think they so. are, yes, but I, I, I also am unclear if that's actually notably different than what we see in mammals. Just, it may be. Okay. level but i don't know i don't think it's incredibly different and so it's also worth pointing out so the two kinds of melanin that we can really see are, so we you melanin is like dark brown black my hair color is quite rich in you melanin scott's redder hair is much richer in pheomelanin right so pheomelanin is kind of your ruddy brown to red color you melanin mm -hmm. is your dark brown to black Right, and I think that kind of can launch us into, not launch us, but is worth keeping in mind that uh, the entire range of color is not captured in these. Right. Yeah. Like, there are different different ways to make different colors. So just because we are getting these two melanin types doesn't necessarily mean that's the only color we're seeing on these animals. There could, be, could have been complex interactions of different melanins that we're right. oblivious to. And it's and other also, pigments that don't fossilize. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Right. That said, it hasn't stopped paleontologists from deciding that we know the color of everything. It's weird that the color of every dinosaur turns out to be red because red, red black pigment, and brown. Right. Red, hey, black, man. and brown fossilizes. I mean, I, I kind of get it. Like, we went from this is completely unknowable to, like, now sort of knowable. Yeah. Right. I think it's also worth pointing out that I don't think like osteoderms and scale, well, scales can do it, but I don't think osteoderms like this can really have a lot of structural color going on. So like for, for Borealopelta in particular, because we're looking at the color of the osteoderms, which I don't think can do the kinds of structural things that allow you to get like brilliant greens and blues mm -hmm. and iridescence. I think the ratio of pheomelanin to eumelanin that's seen is a really good indicator of what color it actually was. Mm -hmm. Like maybe mm -hmm. with some nuance that we can't know, but the ultimate reconstruction of the color of Borealopelta is what Dalton's showing here on the video, which is that it was mostly red with counter shading and a, ver and a white belly that's not really captured on this model. Yeah, a lighter belly, not a lighter like belly, a stark white belly. And notably that there is evidence that the, the tips of some of these larger spikes and osteoderms had higher concentrations of darker pigmentation if I'm remembering correctly. So this kind of patterning, I think, has some justification to it. Right. Which is really cool. So, I, I mean, as Notosaurus, it's hard to rank this design because we don't really know much about Notosaurus. Is, we we really... just pretend it's Borealopelta. Well, that's what I was going to say, is, like, as Borealopelta, this is almost perfect as a model. The only thing Pretty that's much. really wrong is the feet, which are wrong in almost every yeah. quadrupedal dinosaur in this game. Yep. 
It is also funny to me that this is one of the cases where um, this animal has an entire group named after it, and we know almost nothing about it. Um, the notosaurs are a group within ankylosaurs that are, well, hopefully, you've seen our UO plus F less episode, so you know the other one, the ankylosaurids. Ankylosaurids? Ankylosauroids? Ankylosaurids? Ankylosaurines, I believe. But... Ankylosaurines? Well, there's a family level group, and then there's all they get, and then ankylosaurians. Ankylosaurids. It's okay. notosaurids and ankylosaurids. Okay. With so some others. So hopefully, you've seen our previous Yo plus F plus video, so you'll be familiar with the ankylosaurids that are rather more notable for having their big fancy tail clubs, and the notosaurids uh, do not have those. They are generally more characterized by having slightly longer tails, more flexible ones, because they don't have that big old tail club, and a lot more uh, larger spikes and armor seemingly uh, around their shoulders, mm -hmm. and uh, generally like some spikes along the sides of their tails as well. Yeah, you don't really see the tail ones on this one, but the shoulder spikes are pretty pretty obvious. Mm -hmm. Just wait till we get to Sorapelta. Yeah. <laughs> um, but should we, I guess, should we go to the species viewer and, and, and rank this design? Or is there anything else we want to um, talk about with Notosaurus here? I have very little to say about this animal in general. They don't have tail clubs. They got cool shouldery armor. One, one thing that might be interesting to note is that Generally speaking, like despite the fact that the two groups of ankylosaurs presumably diverged at the same time, the fossil record of notosaurians is much richer earlier on, to my knowledge, mm -hmm. than the fossil record of ankylosaurians. Uh, I have to check that. I believe yeah. that's true. Because there's Gargoyleosaurus and... Um... The other one from the Morrison, right? There's the, those late Jurassic ones. Mm -hmm. But are I, those derived enough to actually be ankylosaurids or, or they're notosaurids? They're notosaurids. They yeah, the, the I was, I was under the impression that there was something from the middle Jurassic. Middle Jurassic. Yes. Like, the most basal known ankylosaurid, according to Wikipedia, is Aletapelta, which lived in the late Cretaceous. Huh. Ankylosaurid. All right. Thank you, Wikipedia. Why does it say 133? This is sus. Well, You're no, so... Uh, Okay, so Minmi, Cedar Pelta. So there are some early Cretaceous ankylosaurids. Chuan Quilong. I remember one of these being reported that kind of has like a transitional tail club. So, okay. I don't know if there I, was one, but there should have been one. I, I can't do enough research to back up my statement right now. I might just cut it out. I, no, I, no, I think you might. I think he's correct. I think you're I, probably right. And I'm not saying that there aren't early Cretaceous ankylosaurids. It's just that, like, it appears that notosaurids become successful faster. And they're, more of them. they're definitely more abundant. There are more of them early on, and there are less of them later on. Whereas ankylosaurids kind of show the opposite trend, where in the late Cretaceous they're really numerous, but there are fewer notosaurids that we know about. Mm -hmm. You know, the fossil record's incomplete, as I always say. It's possible that pattern will change, but given that they're pretty heavily built animals and are subject to the same preservational biases, mm -hmm. I'm inclined to believe that the signal is roughly accurate. So it's probably that animals like this were successful faster than their relatives with tail clubs for reasons we don't yeah. really know. That's a pattern you see in some other groups too, that, that at least Jacques tends to call an evolutionary relay where like one branch of a clade will be particularly successful for a while. And then their sister group will then immediately become successful afterwards. Hmm. Like Rhynchocephalian like, squamates. Yes. I don't know if it's really a widely used term, but it's certainly one that Jacques likes. I like that quite a bit. It's not, and it's not inconsistent with like 
modern distribution of groups where you'll have incredibly diverse groups that are like sister to something with like one or two species in it. Yeah. That live in like one place. Here come the Notosauruses. Wow. Kind of, kind of boring. It, They're a little dopey. It moves slow. These were not fast animals. The, the They're calm. Is... They exude a sense of calm. A sense of serenity that we have, I think, to some degree picked up in the process of recording this video. Because, folks, I cut a lot of it out. <laughs> this is this is my emotional support ankylosaur. Yeah. Um, you can give this a hug. Nice. Carefully. Yeah, watch the spikes. Okay, I'll give it an A because it's pretty and not offensive to look at. A as well for me. It's a really good representation of Borealopelta. Um, I would rank yeah, it. Well, it's not. Right. I would rank it more poorly for not being Notosaurus, but we don't know that it's not Notosaurus. <laughs> it's just completely something else. Um, but it has to be because we know nothing about Notosaurus. A tier. It's pretty. And it's pretty accurate too. Yeah. This, this isn't a. This isn't a, a U plus F less Anodontosaurus situation <laughs> where it's just like, oh, it's fully another animal that is that we do know but it's just a whole other thing yeah we don't really know what notosaurus is so i love this little guy i think that social animation that they have is one of the best in the game and i don't know i just love them i think that they're adorable i will also give it an a all right well Alex? it doesn't really matter i was gonna say high b i would have put it as a Ooh. C, if it wasn't for the social animation. Wow. No, that's just fine. It's not bad. But the social animation is great, and I love it. So, yeah. High B. Oh, yeah. I was going to put it at A, but the social animation, remembering it, brings it to an S for me. Um, so, I think so our I think... composite's an A, right? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, Notosaurus will be officially ranked. Let me make sure. Yep. Notosaurus is officially ranked A tier. All right, Scott, are you ready? Oh, of course I'm ready. Take us away. Ready to spin, spin the that wheel. wheel. My neighbors are going to love me. <laughs> no fucking way. Almost. Oh. Oh, oh almost for our water. Our first marine, though. That's exciting. Our first marine reptile. All right, everybody, join us next week for the first episode where the four of us are going to shut the f*** up and Amelia is going to talk the entire time <laughs> and uh, as we learn Not about marine reptiles <laughs> <laughs> Alex also, why are you skinnamarinking right now yeah, I'm skin <laughs> for our dedicated fans here's a, here's a little Dalton cam for you <laughs> there he is <laughs> <laughs> Because, as we've said, this animal is known from specs. Well, it, it's known from a couple fragments of the pelvis. Well, really. it's, it's the hips, Some the legs, legs, and the tail. Okay. My favorite parts of the woman. So because this animal... That's a lie, and you know it. <laughs> it doesn't fit the phenotype. The, the tits of Notosaurus <laughs> We can reconstruct them as big as I want. <laughs> <laughs> the keratin sheath. It's like Madonna's bra. <laughs> I call like the notice <laughs> We are the notice Outrageous.